With new treatments for postpartum depression emerging, wouldn't it be great to have a head-to-head -head comparison with the previously first-line treatments? Are we ready to abandon the old for the new? Hi, Jim Phelps here for the Psychopharmacology Institute. The new medications are steroid modulators, including the injectable brexanolone and now the oral zoranolone. But hold on a second. Not all treatments for postpartum depression are pharmaceutical. According to a 2016 review in the New England Journal of Medicine, treatment options for postpartum depression should depend on the severity of symptoms and the level of functional impairment. That makes sense. Mild depression can be addressed with peer support and non-directive counseling moderate depression with more formal psychotherapy, and indeed interpersonal therapy has been specifically adapted for postpartum depression. But in the 2016 update of the Canadian Network for Mood and Anxiety Treatment, that's the CANMAT, conventional CBT is also first line, whereas medication treatments, meaning until recently standard antidepressants, are generally recommended for severe depression or lack of response to non-drug therapy. Which antidepressants? A 2021 pharmacist review recommends sertraline, and the CANMAD guidelines are broader, sertraline but also citalopram or escitalopram. But now, as you know, a new class of medications has become available for the treatment of postpartum depression, the steroid modulators, brain steroids, that is. One of the key neurosteroids in the story of mood disorders is allopregnanolone, a steroid compound expressed in glutamatergic and GABAergic neurons in several regions of the brain. In animal models, acute stress increases its synthesis, but chronic stress lowers it. And during pregnancy, progesterone triggers upregulation of allopregnanolone, and the levels reach their highest during the third trimester. After delivery, allopregnanolone levels decrease more quickly and to lower levels in women who develop postpartum depression. Ah, very suggestive, isn't it? But the mechanisms of the new steroid modulating medications, brexanolone and now zoranolone, are much more complicated than just raising allopregnanolone levels. It's still being worked out. Those mechanisms clearly involve changes in synaptic and extrasynaptic GABA receptors the density and function of which is associated with mood symptoms and suicide. So there's a lot more to learn here. It's not simply your allopregnanolone levels are too low. Nevertheless, we come now to a new trial of zoranolone, funded by the manufacturer as one would expect for the large trials that are needed to gain FDA approval. And given publication in a major journal, in this case JAMA Psychiatry, and given that some of the authors work for the company, you'd probably expect that the results were good. The question is, how good, how fast, and for how long? Well, sure enough, by day three, there's a statistically significant difference in response versus placebo. That's maintained and increases slightly through the eight-week trial, where the reduction in HAMD scores even at two weeks was 18 points versus 13.5 points on placebo. So that's a 4.5 difference in the HAMD scores, where two or three points on that scale is generally regarded as clinically significant in this context. And side effects? The most frequent was somnolence in 15% of the Zoranolone group, but 11% of the placebo group as well. And all of the rest of the reported side effects were about the same in each group, often higher on placebo, which might be explained by a drop in anxiety scores for patients receiving zoranolone more than placebo, and that anxiety decrease paralleled the reduction in depression scores. Of course, this is just the beginning of learning about zoranolone. We don't know anything about its long-term effects yet, and in comparison with antidepressants, we need a head-to-head -head trial, although, interestingly, 20% of patients in this study were on an antidepressant, which was allowed and continued during the trial. And here's finally one more interesting finding that I stumbled upon reviewing this article. In 2019, zoranolone didn't outperform placebo in major depression trials, and the share value of the company that makes it fell by 50%. Nearly half the corporate workforce was cut in restructuring. But now they've obtained an FDA indication, not for major depression, but postpartum depression. Rejoice if you still have your job. To conclude, remember that the first-line treatment for postpartum depression is psychotherapy for mild to moderate cases. 
only for severe cases would these new agents be considered, and only in contrast to the antidepressants that we've been using for several decades. For more on this, I've included in the references an understandable history of neurosteroids, including their complex chemistry, in a 2020 review entitled, Allopregnanolone, the Neuromodulator Turned Therapeutic Agent.